Welcome and uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, today for today's Tea Time Talk. Uh, the shape of a building representing the architecture of 14 Henrietta Street through photography. Tea Time Talks is a series of talks inspired by the history and people of 14 Henrietta Street in Dublin 1. And 14 Henrietta Street is a social history museum of Dublin life from one building's Georgian beginnings to its tenement times. It is run by Dublin City Council Culture Company, which runs cultural initiatives and buildings across the city with and for the people of Dublin. So my name is Sheila, and in a few moments, I'm going to hand you over to today's speaker. But before we start, I want to let you know that there'll be time for some questions at the end of the session. And if you would like to ask a question, you can do so by using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. We we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. When you came into this talk this evening, you might have heard a notification saying the webinar is being recorded. You, however, will not be recorded. Your cameras and mics are disabled, but everyone on screen will be. And the recording of this talk will be shared at a later date on our channels. If you want to be told when this is available and find out about our other projects and events, please sign up to our newsletter and I'll put the link uh, of this in the chat or for this in the chat. So our speaker today is Ross Kavanagh. Ross has been working as a photographer since uh, 1997, shortly after finishing a degree in architecture. Initially specializing in documenting architecture, he now works in a broad range of arts disciplines such as performance and visual arts as well as architecture. He has developed his own practice over time to work more closely and meaningfully with his clients. He served on the board of the Gallery of Photography and has also taught uh, design at uh, uh, DIT as well as uh, photography. So without further ado, let me hand you over to uh, Ross. Welcome, Ross. Thank you very much, Sheila. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be here and thank you very much as well to Kate and all those at the Dublin City Council Culture Company for asking me to talk. Um, so I'm going to just start my uh, screen sharing and I'll get the slideshow up for you. So hopefully you all now will see a full screen of the slideshow. And just again, thank you very much. And thank you, Sheila, for the introduction. So I don't have to talk too much about, uh, about myself at the start. Um, so this talk is called The Shape of a Building, and it's representing the architecture of 14 Henrietta Street through photography. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a series of photographs that I took in the recent while for uh, the Dublin City Council Culture Company of 14 Henrietta Street, uh, that they were done particularly for a book that they're producing. And Leon Bell also was involved in the production of that book. And they asked me to come in and photograph the building for that. Um, so I'm gonna show you photographs from that. I'm also going to talk about my thought process and share with you the kind of things that are going through my head when I'm photographing a building and uh, just to show that they're applicable to lots of different types of buildings and the way that I would approach a building and uh, hopefully you get something out of it as I go through it. So I'll be showing lots of different projects uh, that I worked on at the same time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead here and uh, just to reiterate that, yes, I'm an architectural photographer. I also work in the arts, in uh, visual arts and in performance and um, that bit that she was saying about working uh, more meaningfully with my clients has actually happened quite a lot over the last year and a bit with uh, the lockdown in that I have been doing a lot more film with uh, some of my clients and that has been very rewarding uh, in that that I do get to work more closely with them, uh, which has been very enjoyable. So uh, I'm going to start off very briefly at the beginning uh, when I first became interested in architectural photography and uh, what it could be used for in uh, architectural discourse and how you may understand the building. It was uh, 1993, I think, uh, I was in college in DIT uh, in Bolton Street uh, studying architecture, and a lot of us went to Berlin at the time to get work, 
uh, the eastern side of Berlin had just opened up and a lot of people were living there in squats. And the very first night I visited Berlin, uh, a friend of mine, Marcus, who I was staying with, brought me to a friend of his, Gareth, who was living in a squat in East Berlin. And I was really struck by the space that he lived in. And uh, immediately I started to think about how would you represent this particular space? It was a building, a uh, classic Berlin, a uh, 19th century building that uh, had several rooms all revolving around uh, what I believe is called a Berliner Raum, which had a very large window, which looked out onto the courtyard. There were lots of level changes in the, in the apartment. And I thought to myself, how would you show this? How would you represent this? Uh, what method would you use to uh, show this to other people and show what kind of space it is? So uh, a year later, uh, when the building was being uh, refurbished, uh, and I think a lot of the buildings in that area have subsequently been refurbished, um, I stole into the building site and took some photographs. So it was my first attempt at architectural photography. You can see the building on the left as it's being done up. And uh, I think this is a bathroom on the right. And this is the main room that the rooms, the rooms around are kind of cascaded down uh, in levels to this room here. It was a very, very beautiful space. Um, at the time I visited there, there was no electricity. So, uh, and there definitely wasn't any electricity when I revisited it. So I was using natural light. So that's how I started off. And since 1997, I've been working for lots of different clients, uh, trying to do exactly the same thing, uh, trying to understand buildings uh, using photography. So here we are, 14 Henrietta Street. Um, this uh, set of photographs I'm gonna show you first is the outside of the building. And uh, these were taken on a different occasion actually to most of the photographs that you'll see here. Um, we had to wait until the uh, windows are washed uh, before we took the outside photographs and also the weather to improve a little bit. So this is the, my second visit to the building. Um, so the first shot that you see here is very much uh, a standard way of approaching a building in architectural photography in that you photograph it from the front as an elevation uh, straight on. And uh, it's one of the first things that I would do or I would try and do uh, when I'm photographing a building. Um, I was, uh, this, the, the, this series of shots will show my thought process in photographing the outside of the building. In this case, the building, uh, the, the, the straight lines that are meant to be straight aren't necessarily straight. You can see there's a sag in the center of 14 Henrietta Street there as the building has, um, as the wall at the front, I should say, has subsided. And um, it perhaps is too much of an organic street or an organic construction to lend itself well to a very, clinical uh, straight on photograph. Um, so uh, just to, I'm gonna tie these shots in with another project that I photographed actually in 2004, um, which is the Irish Management Institute in uh, Sandyford for Arthur Gibney and Partners. It's quite a long time ago, but I, uh, the series of shots I have here actually um, will help illustrate the process uh, that, I was, uh, that I was using. So here we have uh, a new extension to the Irish Management Institute. Um, and it, it is, a, again, a straight on elevation of the building. It works quite well. Uh, all the lines are going straight across or up and down. And uh, as a composition, uh, it, it, it works fine. And it's a good way, I think, to approach something like this. So uh, back to 14 Henrietta Street. So here's me moving around a little bit. I wasn't happy with the straight on view. Um, and I said, okay, I'll do a very wide angle uh, oblique view. And uh, so here we are in the middle of the street, um, photographing at quite an extreme angle with quite a, a wide angle lens. Uh, I wasn't entirely happy with this either. Um, again, the, uh, the approach is quite clinical. Um, and the Piper's Club, which is the building to the left of 14 Henrietta Street, is quite dominant in the photograph and probably doesn't represent the way that you look at the buildings when you're there. So um, again, to tie this into the Irish Management Institute, uh, we have a similar situation here where we have very uh, strong receding lines, a very heightened sense of perspective with the left hand side quite large. In this case, though, it kind of works. The composition uh, sits uh, comfortably in the frame and the lines 
don't seem out of place in the way that they uh, are presented on, on the uh, two-dimensional image. So not happy with that. I went back across to the other side of the street. Again, very wide angle and again oblique, but a little bit less so. And the center of the building, as the center of the photograph uh, has 14 Henrietta Street, uh, it's focused on that. Uh, the perspective, I suppose, isn't as forced. And uh, I'm going to go to the Irish Management Institute again. And here is the same thing. I've come back a little bit further and I'm photographing a building with a little bit less of a forced perspective. In this case, there's a lot of depth to the picture and you'll see overlapping planes. And that's quite nice. When you get further back from something and you have things that overlap, they kind of um, telescope into one another and you can appreciate it in uh, a slightly different way where you don't read the spaces in between the objects as much. Um, they're more kind of compressed. So um, the last image here I have of the outside is of the whole street. Uh, I thought to myself, well, why not try and get a picture of the whole street, put it in context, and maybe in the photograph, it'll be, uh, it'll perform the function of having a good outside photograph of the building. And in this case, the 14 Henrietta Street is kind of the largest building in the image. Um, and uh, so the focus of the building is on that, even though the Piper's Club is like the largest building, but it's cropped off, you have the uh, Henrietta Street at the right point in the building. Now, if I had uh, an ideal circumstance here, I would have liked to have gone further back down the street towards Bolton Street and taken a longer shot of the street, but I just wasn't able to do that because there are lots of cars in the foreground and it's difficult to account for that. Sometimes when I do a job, I can be cheeky and I can put some red cones out, but you can't really do that for long. And most of the time, what I would do is I would park in a spot and move my car at the last minute, which is exactly what I did here. So there are no cars in the foreground. And I think it's probably the best shot I have of the outside of the building. Just wanted to mention something about brick as well. Um, when I'm photographing brick, it's amazing how subtle brick can be in different lights. Um, in strong sunlight, it doesn't necessarily suit brick. Um, brick of different ages behaves different ways. If you have a recent building that's made of brick, it acts as one surface. Uh, in that all the planes of the brick are kind of in the same plane and they will reflect light in the same way. Uh, with an older building like this, sometimes, as you can see here, the mortar comes out quite strongly and sometimes it's quite dominant in a photograph, particularly if it's a contrasty photograph, you will have the, the mortar becoming, um, the pattern of the mortar will become quite dominant. So you might read that a little bit more. And that is the case here. Um, so everything's, nothing's ideal. I would love to approach this some, maybe on a very, uh, balmy summer's evening where there's a lot of nice diffuse light about the building. I think maybe it would suit the brick a bit better. So to finish off this series of photographs, here we are in the Irish Management Institute, a uh, photograph from a different direction, but again, a street. And in this case, I think the Henrietta Street photograph is more successful than the uh, Irish Management Institute building. So the last shot here before we go in is uh, a photograph of the door. A lot of the talk I'm going to be talking about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of medium shots and wide angles, and this is a medium shot of the door. Uh, any Georgian building, my goodness, you will have such a wealth of detail in a door, and this is uh, absolutely no exception. It's beautiful uh, limestone and, and brick. And uh, I think actually provides a decent kind of uh, I suppose a decent feeling of what the building, well, sorry, a decent representation of what the building, building feels like when you approach it. And the other thing I wanted to say about this, a lot of times when I'm photographing, well, I'm photographing any building, I always try and open a door or offer some imaginary method of, of walk, if you were walking into the photograph, where would you go? Is there a dead end or is there a place where you can go on to experience this place further? Or, or indeed escape <laughs> if you want to. So uh, in this case, I've opened the door here. It's, it's, I suppose in simple terms, it's an inviting image, inviting you into the building. So we're in the building now. Uh, this is the uh, foyer space. And I just called around today actually to pick up copies of the book. And I realized that the reception desk has been changed and it's really beautiful actually. It's, um, 
in a different spot just at the bottom of the stairs. Um, but this is a shot that uh, would be an example of uh, me trying to get everything into the shot. Uh, I don't know where to stop. I can't imagine cropping down. I have to, I have to get the whole thing in. So this is a very, very wide angle shot. Um, normally, if you have a foyer space in a building, um, it, it's one of those spaces that actually suits a wide angle shot very well. Um, it's, you know, let's say if it's in a hotel or an office or a public building, it's where you come in and you know you're meant to be wowed by the space and generally speaking you are there they're very you know uh you, the people want to make a welcoming space that has a certain amount of uh impact when you walk in and this is no different um however it being a domestic building or having been a domestic building uh, and i will talk about this a lot actually I'm, I'm just not sure sometimes when you when you go for a wide angle and you try and get everything in uh Sometimes you're representing it in a way maybe that you don't experience it. Um, but I'll move on. So this, uh, by way of uh, similarity, uh, this is a building that I photographed at Henry J. Lyons, which is on York Street opposite the College of Surgeons. And it is an example of a foyer space that has stairs going through it. And I suppose they're designed to wow. And they're designed to... Uh, provide a focal point maybe for the building as well. And in many ways, this photograph here is a very similar type of photograph than what I have taken in the foyer of 14 Henry Yard Street. Again, uh, another wide angled photograph. Um, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm standing in a spot and going, well, I have to get the stairs in, or I have to get the door in, or I have to get the windows in. And the answer to that is to go wide angle. Uh, a lot of these wide angle shots are actually not just one photograph, they're uh, combinations of, of four or, or, or more shots that I would have taken on. And I'll explain that a bit later on how I do that. Again, I've kept the front door open here. Uh, it provides an escape, uh, a lead on from the image. I, I sometimes think, um, as I said, imagine if you walked into the image, where would you go? Do you have a space where you can go on further? And it shows the two windows at the different levels in the foyer space. Again, another foyer photograph. This time it's a graph and architects in the Salsa Art Center. Very wide angle. As I said, they kind of suit wide angle photographs. Uh, they're big spaces. They're quite, um, uh, I can't think of the right word, but um, they use shape an awful lot. You can play with the shapes. So uh, here is me trying to uh, narrow it down a bit. I've, I've got the wide angle shots. They're out of the way. Uh, I have it covered, so I, I'm safe in a way, but I want to refine my view. Uh, so I focused in a bit more on the door on the left, which is the tenement part of the building, or represent, a representation of the tenement part of the building, and the right-hand side, which is the Georgian part, and um, the stairs coming down. I don't know if it's entirely successful. Um, and here I am trying again. Uh, I'm wondering if this will work. Uh, this is just a, an elevation of the door. Uh, that leads into the corridor behind the entrance. And it shows maybe a little bit more detail and the junction between the two different types of treatment of the space. And again, I'm going closer. And uh, part of my brief for this project was to get details. So um, this would have been taken at a later stage during the day. And I can't figure out actually why it is a different, slightly different color. And I'm not sure if I introduced a, an artificial light into this or not. I actually can't remember. But after kind of the big work is done in the building, there's nothing nicer than to walk around with a handheld camera and uh, photograph details, which is what I did in, in, in a lot of uh, this particular job, um, it being part of the brief, but also it's a nice way to uh, approach the building in a more relaxed kind of way once you've got the, uh, the major stuff out of the way. So here we are still in the entrance space and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, orthogonal views. And by orthogonal, I mean looking straight at a wall, for instance, in this case, where you look straight at a building, a bit like the elevation that I had at the start of the, of the slideshow. This is a photograph where I'm looking directly at a wall um, so that on the wall and in the photograph, all the horizontal lines that are meant to be horizontal are still horizontal. And all the vertical lines, if they're meant to be vertical, are still vertical. It's, again, it's a very wide angle shot. This is four shots stitched together. Um, but as I'm going to show you in a couple of uh, photographs coming up, I'm going to show you that the uh, 
if you focus a very wide angle photograph on a flat plane and you're photographing directly towards that flat plane, in, in this case, the wall, um, you don't have that many receding lines like you would in a normal wide angle photograph. It's basically a two, well, not entirely, but approaching a two dimensional surface that you're photographing. So it's quite a nice way to get uh, the geometry and the design of a wall um, if you don't want to just get a particular, if you don't want to get a detail and you're forced, forced to go wide angle, a straight on view calms the whole thing down. Uh, there's very few, there, there's not as many receding lines. And I'm going to show you some other ones here that I have. Uh, this is, I do a lot of art documentation. This is a Wolfgang Tillmann's show in IMA. And again, I'm really close to this, this work. I have to photograph at wide angle. But if I photograph it in a way that my lines, my vertical lines are vertical and my horizontal lines are horizontal, you really don't know how far you are away. If you can see the, the, the pins at the top that are holding it in place are quite accentuated in their angle, which shows that it is a very wide angle photograph. Uh, scale becomes hard to judge in this, in this situation. So very often I introduce a figure, in this case me, uh, which I tend to do a lot because I'm generally the only person in the galleries when I'm doing this kind of thing, which does help in understanding an image. Um, the next image is a similar type of image that I uh, took as part of a commission I was asked to uh, do in Tanley Hall in Drogheda. It's a Francis Johnson design building, absolutely amazing building, beautiful details. Uh, amazing construction, very modern for its time. Uh, so I'll be showing a couple of photographs from that uh, from that commission in this slideshow as well. Again, this is a straight on photograph of a wall. It's really, really, really wide angle. You can see how wide it is when you look at the sides of the image, you see the receding lines. But what I wanted to get is a good uh, representation of the uh, proportions of the design of the wall. And uh, I wanted to get the whole thing in and I've succeeded in doing that, I think. Um, so that's this function, the wide angle function, uh, photographing a flat surface. Here we are, another wide angle photograph, uh, not so wide, but maybe tall in the uh, foyer of 14 Henrietta Street. And uh, this is a little bit more controlled. It's got a nice uh, composition in that the banister goes up from the bottom, uh, leaves the bottom right hand corner and snakes its way up. See the two windows. You see the reception desk and uh, you see the molding and you also see the ceiling as well. Again, this is a similar type of angle. Um, it's not, I wouldn't like it as much as a photograph, but again, sometimes I, I photograph something that I might necessarily uh, like that much, but I need to have to show how things work. And I think that's one of the things that I try and do is uh, show how everything is put together. Uh, I don't want to leave any kind of relationship uh, un undescribed. Um, and again, uh, my uh, obsession with opening doors, uh, at the very bottom of the shot here, you can see that the door is open and I put a studio light in the corridor behind it to give that idea that you could walk out of the photograph if you wanted to. It gives a little bit of a relief. So I'm getting more to the top of the stairs here and I'm doing that thing of trying to narrow the focus down, uh, trying to get a sense of the space without being too dramatic. So the left-hand shot is a shot from the balcony towards a corner and it shows the window and the ceiling, uh, the plaster molding. And on the right-hand side, it's the same spot really, showing the stairs, uh, the plaster molding and a bit of window. And also, um, I'll talk about this in the next one. Here we are, uh, we're still on the landing and pull back a bit so you don't see the stairs, um, but you see two of the windows very much in perspective and some of the wall. And one of the things that uh, I want to mention is the, I call this the shape of a building because like I'm interested in describing how a building, how a building is. I don't want to represent something that isn't true. Um, and one of the things that I tend to do an awful lot is turn off the artificial lights. Um, and I try and rely on the, the daylight coming in. And I think in this building, well, actually in uh, so many Georgian buildings, 
the, the natural light coming in is just stupendous. The windows are huge and they really light the space, but in lighting the space, they use a light that is coming from the actual design of the space. So it helps describe the space. You see the shadows in certain places that helps gives you the help that helps give you an idea of the shape of the space. Um, so I wouldn't use this photograph on its own. It doesn't show what the steps do, but taken into conjunction with the other, the other two, uh, I think it begins hopefully to describe the space a little bit more. So we're going into uh, the main room at the front on the first floor. Uh, this is a kind of a moderately wide angle photograph of the space showing the model of the building in the center and the doorway on the right hand side again open uh, leading into this, uh, the room behind and on the left hand side showing the windows. So it's an explanatory photograph and um, this room is hard to photograph because the model is actually quite large in the center. So you're kind of forced to go wide to make the model actually become less of a deal in the shot. So um, in the next shot here, we have an extremely wide angle photograph that I took because, uh, possibly because I could. Uh, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it will be my favorite type of shot, but it does, again, explain things. The uh, model is quite small in the photograph. Uh, whereas in reality, when you're there, it's quite, it's quite big um, and you have to negotiate your way around it. But it shows the, uh, it shows three of the walls in the room, which is quite a lot for a photograph. Um, but uh, it was a domestic space. Uh, and I'm not sure if this type of dramatic, very uh, heightened perspective image is kind of appropriate for a domestic space. But it does the job of explaining the room a little bit. This again is Tanley Hall in near Drogheda, and um, it's a very, very wide angle shot, again, of a similar type of setup. And I would say exactly the same type of thing about this photograph. Um, it's a domestic space. The furniture, however, is stripped out, most of it. And uh, the, the image is quite dramatic, uh, particularly with the light coming through the windows. And again, whereas it does explain things and it's a dramatic photograph, I'm always suspicious of, of myself in making this type of image because in trying to get everything in and making it dramatic, maybe you're losing a sense of the intimate. However, by using it with other types of images, uh, maybe it helps describe the building a bit better. This is the same room uh, facing the other way. It's a more of a controlled perspective. It's uh, straight on down the center, and I think it works a little bit better. Uh, this is the same room again. I'm focusing in a bit more closely. Uh, it still provides a certain amount of detail. Uh, it has the windows. It has the room behind. It has the architrave at the door. It has some of the ceiling, and it has a nice light on the wall. Um, so here is me trying to do the same type of thing in this room. Uh, I'm focusing into the corner. <laughs> and uh, whereas I don't normally do that, I think it has, is a little bit calmer. At a certain amount of detail, it says something about the space. And here we are again in the same room. I'm actually pointing back towards the landing area. It has three windows in the shot. It shows a little bit how the rooms uh, coexist and how, how strong the windows are. I mean, Genie Mac, they take in so much light into the space. And I think that works a little bit better. So uh, this is the room behind it, uh, facing back down towards North King Street. And uh, it's a straight on elevation of the uh, wall with the fireplace in it. And I think it does a decent enough job of explaining that part of the room. Um, I'm gonna go through these. Um, the next one is the same room again, uh, pointing towards the window. And uh, actually, I, I only realize now that my camera is in the photograph. I didn't realize it's actually in the mirror on the left hand side of the mirror at the base. I, did, I hadn't, uh, I had meant to get rid of that from the shop, but obviously hadn't at the time. Um, one of the things, when you take a photograph in this space uh, and you're trying to get a decent exposure, um, you kind of overexpose it a little bit, but the room actually in the raw image would be quite dark. I brought up the shadows quite a bit. And when the light comes into the room like that, it does play havoc with your lens. You will get uh, spots of light here and there uh, if you're photographing directly into uh, a light source. And it's really important in this type of situation to have a clean lens, it really helps that there's no mist on it or anything like that, because that does affect 
it when you have a lot of light coming into your lens. And this shot here is probably, I think, the better shot of the space. It's a diagonal shot. It's not too wide angle. And it shows, it shows kind of a more, maybe more natural view of the space. And this is me trying to replicate the more focused in view. Um, and uh, I don't think it works as well as the other space in that, in that sense. Um, I kind of prefer the shot that we used before, that you, that you saw just before this. So here we are again in the same room that you would have seen. Um, you take that wall elevation of in Townley Hall, beautiful room. Um, again, what I'm doing here is I'm going as wide as I can to try and get everything in. In this shot, I really wanted to get the windows, but I also wanted to get the ceiling. Um, and unlike in a lot of my shots, I would have taken an awful lot of furniture out of this room but I realized that the floor, and I think I, I think I took the mat out of this room as well, or the rug. Um, I can't I can't actually remember, but um, I think the furniture here in this room performs a function of grounding the shot a little bit, giving a kind of a, a focus point on what would otherwise otherwise be a very very flat surface in the room. And even though the furniture, if you look at it, is not an, a representative at all how the room would be used. Uh, at least it does kind of uh, not dominate the shot and uh, gives it a kind of a focal point or a little anchor. Um, kind of going to the other extreme, uh, I have a couple of shots here from uh, Humewood House in County Wicklow uh, near Bolton Glass. Um, and uh, this shot of just is just stacked full of furniture, and I normally get rid of everything from a shot, but uh, I think the the uh, furniture here, because there's so much of it, actually blends into itself, and there's so much color and detail in the shot anyway that it doesn't really uh, impact adversely. And uh, there are a lot of cushions. If I start messing with cushions, I never know what to do with them. Um, so I generally let them be. <laughs> if they're in a certain spot, I just don't try and, uh, unless they're really out of order, I, I, I don't move them because the, the cushions, once you start messing with them, you don't know uh, where to stop or when to stop. So again, uh, Humewood House in County Wicklow, a diagonal shot of a room, uh, very, very rich everywhere, in the ceiling, in the floor, in the walls, and also in the furniture. Um, and I think they, they work okay in this shot. I think it wouldn't work as well if the furniture wasn't in it, but the, it does tend to dominate. And it's one of those things when you're in a space, um, what do you do with the sofa? Because it can become huge in your photographs and you very often don't notice it until you start positioning the camera and uh, taking photographs, particularly at wide angle. If, if you have a sofa close to you in wide angle, it'll be huge. So, um, it's important uh, to take account of that, I think, sometimes. So bearing that in mind, in 14 Henry Red Street, this is a bedroom with a four-poster bed. And this is the photograph I took on my first day there. Um, I thought the four-poster bed entirely dominated the room. I wanted to get some image of the room that didn't have the four-poster bed in it, but still said something about the room. Uh, so this is it. It's actually still a very wide-angle shot. I think I used two shots to make this. And you can see the four-poster bed on the right. Um, but on my second visit, I was asked to actually photograph it with the bed in it. So what I did was, uh, again, another very wide angle shot. I backed as far as I could out the door of the room uh, so that the bed wouldn't be as large in the shot as it could be. And again, went very wide angle um, and uh, tried to get as much of the room in as possible so that the four poster bed uh, became smaller in the shot. And I think it actually works fine. So again, uh, part of the uh, brief I had on this job was to photograph details. And I have a ton of details. I've only put some of them in here. Uh, and there is nothing nicer uh, for me uh, when you have a bit of time left in the day. You've done all the uh, major photographs. You've covered everywhere. And you can. Uh, put the tripod to one side, leave the bag somewhere and just have a camera or two uh, with different lenses 
and walk around and, and photograph things that um, appeal to you. And in uh, Henrietta Street, it really is incredible, the plaster work. You could spend days in there photographing it or drawing it. It's beautiful. Um, so uh, here are some details that I would have photographed at the time. And also actually part of the, part of the thing that I was noticing was the um, restoration work that had been done is very obviously uh, indicated um, by the way the uh, various things were repaired. So I was also photographing this as, as part of the details. And when I'm using handheld uh, camera, uh, I'm kind of throwing some of the my kind of rules of photography out the window um, or architectural photography out the window where you try and uh, have a structured uh, a geometric uh, image. Like it's nice sometimes just to forget about those and uh, photograph as, as your eye takes you. Again, here's a detail of the plaster work in the main entrance area. So uh, this is one of the rooms on the ground floor, uh, I think, um, which is uh, to represent uh, part of the tenement area of the, of the museum. And uh, this is one of the rooms I really love the light in. It's really gorgeous. It comes in very soft way. And I was trying to think to myself, why did I leave the net curtain up there? Um, it may have been because I thought it probably suited the feeling of the room, or maybe there might have been something behind it. I can't remember, but the light is lovely. And it's something to do with the wallpaper as well. Um, and maybe just the size of the window and the return of the building that's behind it. But I really do quite like it. Again, I have my open door. And here is the open door again. Uh, another view uh, showing the room. And here is a view of the uh, fireplace, which I'm not sure, is it 1950s or earlier than that? Uh, but I just thought uh, it deserved a photograph of its own uh, with the wallpaper. Again, with the light just coming across it, it really is lovely. So uh, this wasn't part of my brief when I was photographing, but I, I couldn't resist it. Uh, the front part of the building, uh, it's so nicely designed. It's so rich in detail. Um, such a good job. It must be a thrill to visit when you when you come into the building for the first time. So I was excited to photograph it. The light again is beautiful. In this case, we did take down the net curtains, and I I, I don't know what the inconsistency is there. Um, but I'm going to show you two shots here of the room. Um, very very similar. Uh, I was just thinking different things. In this photograph here, it's a, a standard wide angle photograph. Uh, from the corner of the room towards the window. Uh, on the left-hand side, showing the partition that uh, goes to the bedroom area. And on the right-hand side, showing a little bit of the bed. Um, but in the center of the shot, showing the table and the light and the fireplace with the uh, clothes and things drying in front of it. Um, and in the background, uh, the, uh, some of the wall with the original wallpaper. So the next photograph, I couldn't decide. I didn't know what to do. I was in the same spot. Should I get another shot actually uh, showing the bed on the right with the uh, pinned photographs over the bed and the sacred heart and the, and the dresser. Um, so I still don't know what is better. Uh, there's one major difference though. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm photographing uh, a space, uh, especially with natural light, uh, as I said, very often the windows become very, very strong in, in their light. And uh, I sometimes deal with that by uh, using a neutral density graded filter, which is essentially like putting, a, a, I don't know the right way to describe it, but a filter on the lens that's darker on one side than the other. And in this case, I put a filter on the left-hand side of the picture, uh, darkening the window slightly to the left, which calms the light coming down through it. The right-hand side of the image is still brighter, or sorry, is comparatively brighter uh, to the left-hand side of the image, but again, that window, if you look here in the uh, image, I couldn't put a filter in this one because the left-hand side of the image would have got too dark. So uh, because, uh, oops, it is easy. Because this image here is, uh, has the window right over on the left-hand side, I could use the filter there, which uh, helps an awful lot. So uh, I thought I'd get a good photograph of the, of the fireplace. Uh, again, just to say what a brilliant uh, design 
brilliantly designed uh, exhibit or room this is. There's so much detail and it's very, uh, it's a very nice feeling in the space actually. Um, so I just wanted to get that, some of the detail of the space. Uh, a straight on photograph of the fireplace, a little bit of detail of uh, what's on the table in the foreground. Again, wide angle. I tend to do a lot of wide angles when I, I, I just want to get everything in the shot as much as I can. And then another shot here, which I took, which is a combination of two shots, I think, showing the height of the room, which I think is worthwhile getting. Um, I actually couldn't take this photograph without getting the light uh, slap bang in the plaster work at the top of the image. So I took up a couple of extra shots and did some Photoshop. So in this shot, uh, the very top of the image is Photoshopped and I repaired the architrave at the top uh, or the frieze at the top of the fireplace. Uh, getting rid of the lamp in the process, which I think helps it. Uh, I sometimes do these things without telling anybody and uh, nobody notices. So, um, but I reflect what's there. The uh, material that I would have used to repair the, uh, the light or where the light was, was, was real. It was taken from another angle. So here we have two shots. Again, what I'm doing here is I'm focusing in and trying to concentrate down, see what I can get in a kind of more controlled shot, less wide angle. The left hand one is into the bedroom area through the door with the tape, uh, the, 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 the tape covering in the door. And the right hand one is from the table over to the alcove on the left, which shows the original wallpaper that was in the space. And I think I'm right in thinking that the wallpaper was uh, made specially from the pattern. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I think Sheila would know that. Um, and again, in the bedroom area, uh, I, this area could possibly have done with kind of an angled shot, but I thought, okay, we have lots of stuff in the wall. It's kind of laid out in a, uh, in just the way that it's laid out, I thought it, it would work uh, as a, again, a orthogonal straight onto the wall, um, showing the, uh, the framed pictures on the left-hand side and the clothes being repaired on the right. And I suppose it lays them out more um, directly when you're looking at it. And that's what I wanted to get with this photograph. Uh, again, another straight on photograph of the building, uh, sorry, of the room on the uh, ground floor, uh, which I really like. Uh, and I'm going to go into this a bit, uh, just the layers of uh, the, the layers that you see on the walls that reflect the various different uh, ages of um, people living there. And I really like this room uh, because of that. Um, here we have a photograph of uh, this room again, uh, showing a division uh, line where the uh, partition was in, in the, as it, when it was a tenement. And you see the texture of the wall and the floorboards. Um, and this is where I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully I have time to do this now, I'm going to show you uh, the, uh, the type, the way that I do this. If you look at this photograph, you can see that I'm actually standing on the line, on that brown line where uh, you see it going along the floor and up the wall, but it's not in the center of the shot, but the wall uh, is going directly across the shot. The, the lines are going uh, horizontally across the shot. Um, so normally if I took this photograph with a normal camera, um, there would be a perspective on the line in the top and on the bottom. You'd see them receding away uh, if I was pointing the camera to the left. What I'm actually doing is I'm pointing the camera directly at the wall, but I'm shifting the lens slightly. And I just, I hope you can see me talking. Um, do tell me if you can't, because I'm just going to show you very quickly. Uh, this is the camera that I'm using to take this, uh, to take this shot. Um, it uses a particular type of lens, uh, a tilt shift lens. So uh, what I do uh, when I'm photographing this is I, aha, very good, thank you. I, uh, I point the camera directly at that brown line and then I move a little lever on the side of the lens, which shifts the lens over to one side. So the camera is still pointing at the wall, but the image is shifted over to one side. So I'm still keeping the same geometry that I would 
use if I was photographing the wall straight on, but I'm getting a different part of the wall. And uh, it's achieved by using uh, a lens like this. And you can do it in post-production in Photoshop as well. But it's, uh, I find it very useful to do it um, when I'm actually on location. And all of the photographs that you'll see here, or sorry, most of them, uh, apart from the details, would have been taken this way. And that's how it, I would have got all my, let's say the elevation at the side, sorry, on the outside of the building, um, all the verticals being vertical. That's how I would do this. I would use this particular type of lens. You can ask me about that later if you're interested. <clears throat> so um, I'm just gonna show you some photographs that I, I work for the Abbey Theatre. Um, this, these are photographs that I took of a building on uh, North Great Georgia Street, I think, in 2010 for a production of Plan the Stars. You have Joe Hanley, Gabriel Reedy, the late Gabriel Reedy, and um, Denise Goff. And I, um, I suppose it's just one of those, that's why I like that room so much, is that you have in Dublin these walls that show so much history, you know, uh, the amount of people that have lived there, the things they've done to the walls, uh, it still bear, they still bear traces of what went on and it's fantastic to be able to see that. Um, and they become less and less over time, I'm sure, as buildings are renovated, but it's really nice to have that preserved. Um, this building, it, it, they could be the same building looking at the walls, uh, just very interesting to see. Uh, this is the same production two years later with Kelly Campbell in the main lead uh, as Nora. And, uh, that is uh, the same room on the left that you would have seen uh, on the previous two images and on the right uh, as Kelly there with the stars and uh, the plan of the stars wrapped around. And I think sometimes it's amazing these buildings are standing when you see how they have suffered over the years as well. So here are two details from the room on 14 Henrietta Street. And when you see I mean, you could go into this in microscopic detail and it would be as rich. Uh, I really just love the walls. Uh, they show so much how the building has moved, what people have done, uh, the, the type of uh, art they had. I mean, sorry, the, the, the way they decorated the walls, different layers of paint, you know, things that have been knocked into, things that have been nailed into the walls, all that kind of thing. It's such a... Uh, it's a, just an amazing repository of uh, human, human life. Um, so here we are in the, uh, oh my goodness, and I'm realizing I'm probably, I don't know what time it is. Ah, okay, I'm getting near the end. Here we are in the space that uh, I really uh, wanted to get a really good photograph of. You saw a photograph of it at the start. It's a stairwell on the first floor. I think um, behind the, uh, the entrance foyer. And uh, I did spend a bit of time here trying to get it right. It's very dark actually. And uh, I wanted to use natural light again to uh, photograph it. But what I did do is I put a studio light up the stairs to the left-hand side. And you can see in these two images, the studio light is a lot stronger on the left-hand one than it is on the right-hand one. I just wanted to give a bit more detail on the wall. I didn't want to use the artificial lights uh, that were in the space. I wanted definitely to have the light coming from the left. Um, so I did use the studio light. I uh, took these two photographs quite close to the stairs. And then this one a bit further down the wall, the, the, uh, the, the corridor. I do like this one because uh, the wall at the end is slightly lighter than the walls on either side and your eye is drawn more into the center of the image. And again, it's a little bit less wide angle. It's a little bit more restrained. And again, the same applies for the texture on the wall in this space. Uh, going further on from that, uh, one of the things I was asked to do was to photograph the text on this wall, which I'm sure if, you, if you've been to 1400 Street, you know, en person, person who tampers with any thing or who is not, uh, resident or resident in this house will be prosecuted by law. And uh, it's a great bit of uh, writing. I, I don't know how old it is, um, but it, that is in a quite a dark space as well, actually. So I lit this with a, uh, the studio light that I, I use from time to time when I'm photographing a building. Um, again, these are two more details that I photographed uh, 
in different parts of the building as a result of me wandering around uh, with the camera. Uh, and again, when your mind is relaxed, you see more things. And uh, I actually go into a state of panic when I photograph a building at the start because I know there's so much work to do. So I do these wide angle shots, or these very structured shots. But as I said, it's really nice to walk around uh, knowing that you've got that and you start noticing other things. Like in this case, you have what looks to be, uh, I think it's probably a lead pipe uh, for water supply. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, a bit of rope. Uh, how long has the rope been there? I don't know. Uh, the pipe has definitely been there for a long time. Uh, the plaster work detailing being chipped away, painted over. It still exists. It's been surrounded by services and pipes in the intervening time. So uh, I'm near the end of the talk here. Uh, one of the things that I noticed uh, as well is another little bit, bit of graffiti uh, upstairs. And this says the Honorable, or On, uh, Frederick. And I thought it said Nassau, but when I looked him up, it, it, there's a, there is a Frederick Nassau, who's a Prince of Orange from quite a, quite a while ago. So I'm intrigued to, uh, I would be intrigued to know uh, when that was written. And was it referring to the person who lived in the room? Um, or was it a nickname? Uh, or was it him uh, in person? Uh, uh, so I'd be, I'd be very keen to know when that was written and who it referred to. It was interesting finding it. And uh, that's the last slide of my talk here. So um, I'm, uh, it shows the original wall of the tenement area in the front, in the front of the building. And some of the, again, as I said, lovely design of the exhibition, some of the lovely things that are around the room. And uh, I'll, I'll stop talking there. And I'm gonna stop sharing the screen now also. So uh, I'm good to, if anybody has any questions. Um, can you hear me, boss? Um, I can hear you fine. Sheila. Yeah, you, you, you. Um, I'm not sure I can see. Okay, fantastic. Okay, um, I think we're still sharing. Are we still sharing a screen? I'm not quite sure there. Um, um, no. I don't seem to have a screen shared on mine. Uh, Okay. Do I need to do anything, Sheila, at all in that regard? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, Kate can help out there. I'm, I'm just seeing a, um, uh, there isn't a screen share. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Well, thanks very much for that. That was Pleasure. so interesting. And um, if there are any uh, uh, questions, uh, please put them into the uh, Q&A uh, now. That'd be great if we could get some questions there. But uh, thank you so much. It's so interesting to see uh, the building from a photographer's uh, uh, point of view as well. And um, uh, as a guide, uh, we see things all the time, but we, we sort of, we tend to close our eyes to little details and you've just sort of opened up the building again. So we're going to start looking for those little details uh, the next time we're, we're in the building. So um, I've got questions here, but an answer, okay, from Charles. Not a question, but an answer. The on Frederick Nassau was the name of a cat <laughs> <laughs> owned by one of the caretakers who lived in the house for a time after the house closed as a tenement. Charles Duggan, thank you very much, Charles. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Pat Gary, uh, really interesting, Ross. Uh, can you say something about the lenses uh, you use? Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, at the moment, actually, I only use two lenses. Well, for most of it. Um, I, I'll show you. Uh, this is, this here is, is, a, is a wide angle lens um, that is a very good wide angle lens but it has this function, as I was showing, of um, it can shift, sorry, it can shift parallel to the focal plane of the camera. So what essentially it does is the wide angle lens throws an image that comes out of it that's very wide, but the sensor only sees a bit of it. So what you're doing with this is you're throwing a different part of the image on the sensor. But what you're, the essential part of it is that you are actually 
pointing the camera in the right direction to get your geometry right. If you point the lens like this, you'll have converging lines going up as if you're photographing from the bottom of a skyscraper. So if I'm pointing it straight, my vertical lines are still going straight. And uh, this enables me to compose it differently while still keeping the geometry in the way I want it. So this is a 19 millimeter Nikon lens, beautiful lens, really nice. It's so sharp, uh, it's sharp to the edges and it's very versatile. So I actually put this on another camera as well, a Fuji camera with a slightly bigger sensor and it works great. So, um, and the other one I use is a 45 millimeter tilt shift lens from Nikon as well. They're the two main lens that I use. I do a lot of image stitching. So uh, that gives me my different focal lengths. Um, uh, what type of camera is it? And is it film or digital? Okay, so it's a digital camera. Mm -hmm. This particular one that I'm using is a Nikon uh, uh, D850. It's just, I suppose I'm, I'm tied into the system. It's a, uh, I've used digital since 2006. Uh, I ha had used film up to then. Uh, some of the shots that you saw were taken on film. Uh, what I'm interested in are good lenses and camera movements. Um, this is, is very easy to use. You end up with an awful lot of shots. Previously, I might've taken 15, 20 shots in a day. Now I can take 300 and it's dreadful when you get back to the <laughs> studio. <laughs> So uh, not a question, but a huge thank you. Um, I've never been to 14 Henrietta Street before, and I'm so glad I attended this talk uh, before ever entering the building. That's fantastic. So thank they you. will be going uh, with an open eye for details, angles, and open doors. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep the door open. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great device, actually. And, you know, the, I'm going to be looking for photographs now with open doors and open windows. But I, I totally get it when you, when you said that. You know, it's, it's a lovely way to sort of escape out of the picture and see what's... Can I, can I tell you when I first noticed that, actually? Yeah. It was, I went, uh, I went to an exhibition in the Douglas Hyde Gallery in Trinity years ago, and it was a photographer called Richard Billingham, and he's famous for taking pictures of his mum uh, making uh, jigsaws, and so most of the exhibition was that, but he had these photographs of his home estate where he grew up, and each photograph was kind of like a, of an area in the estate, and I said, like, what, what are these photographs, they're not interesting, they're just like green space and buildings and but I started to notice in every photograph there was an escape route there was a little door open somewhere or there was a gap in the hedge or whatever and I thought oh, oh maybe he's thinking about trying to get out and I suddenly thought it lent a different feeling to an image to have this kind of as if you could walk into it like, where would you go can you it's not a dead end and I kind of like that yeah, it's 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 very it's very interesting. It's sort of like that rabbit hole that um, historians love. They sort of yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's see what's behind the door or, or beyond that room. It's it's a lovely, um, another lovely. Uh, thank you very much for a lovely talk and photos. Look forward to visit. So that's uh, thanks very much for that. That's fantastic. Um, would you uh, would you do a recce on a building first to see how the light um yeah. performs in, in the building? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I do, yeah. Uh, very often it's not a, a, a very, um, I don't take notes. Uh, well, I would if, if there's something specific that needs to be got, but it's really, uh, honestly, when you come to a building, there's, there is a trepidation. You don't know what's ahead of you. So when you do visit somewhere beforehand and get a sense of it without taking a camera at all, uh, it really helps. And uh, it means that in the days, like, oh, in the days leading up to photographing something, it, it's there in your head and you're thinking about it and you're not making any specific decisions uh, but at the same time it's preoccupying your thoughts and when you get there you're ready to go and I yeah. really do like that it really it really helps you can't do it all the time but it very, very often <laughs> it happens when I have to uh, I visit a building to photograph it and it pours rain and you go okay that's the day uh, it's a washout so I might as well have a look at the building and, and that is great it's a, it's a silver lining uh, when that actually happens so uh, it, it really helps to do it it gives you Absolutely. the gift of time to yeah. to walk around yes. and to take Absolutely. it in. time yeah. is yeah. hugely important and yeah. that, that's cool yeah um, when we have visitors um into the house um we notice particularly and we, as a guide we have to wait for them to photograph but they but they love the stairs they love that back stairs whatever it is about the light the dark the contrast the color 
um, and everyone's a photographer with their their phones. You yeah, know? absolutely. And they take the most amazing photographs, mm. and they love looking down the stairs and up oh, really? the stairs. Okay, and yeah. you know, it, it it just lends that particular space. So do you have yeah. any uh, uh, thoughts on on that particular space in the house? Well. <laughs> Yeah, I, I left it to the end because it is, I, sh I should have given it more time, but it is a space that you go, oh my goodness. And the stairs as well, absolutely. It's like, um, uh, oh, it's a, apologies, Lord of the Rings analogy, but there is a, a <laughs> stairs which goes from the bottom of the mines to the top of the mountain. Yeah. And that's like that stairs you're in, to, you suddenly see the depth, how, how low it goes and how high it goes. And I really quite like that. Mm. Um, so, uh, <sighs> When you have a stairs, there's always the geometric photograph that you can take, like those beautiful stairs you see in Paris, the, the beautiful stair shots. And it's impossible to resist, uh, you know, not taking them. Uh, and that applies there as well. Uh, and I, I do love that. Uh, and it's, it's, you're looking through all these spaces, like one space into another space into another space. And there might be different light at the different, at the different uh, levels and so on. But the actual, that photograph down the corridor to the stairs, uh, that I have set that I had several versions of uh, that, uh, I don't know it's, a, it's something about it uh, it's uh, right in the center of the building it still gets light of a, of a, of a sort um, it's like the heart of it but again it's a space as well uh, uh, like the, I suppose uh, Jeannie Mac another uh, thing uh, <laughs> Years ago, uh, I think my mum said to me that uh, at the centre of a seed, there is there is a gap, there is a hole, a little little space, you know. So that is the little space in the centre of the building. It's quite confined, but still has an access to the outside. And you really feel, I don't know, maybe it's the colours as well. Like, I mean, in incredible, you know. Colors. There's a very uh, visceral feeling there and, and people are really attracted by, and it, and maybe it's, it's that sort of stares to where is it going or, or you know, it's that open door. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, again, yeah. You know, a lead on. Yeah. it's a lead yeah. on. Where, where is it going to? Yeah. So Jason said, um, hi, Sheila Rob, amazing photographs. They make the house look so interesting. And what's your favorite room or area in the house and why? Uh, well, it would. Mm, it would be a toss up between that stairs, stairs or yeah. or the tenement. Uh, uh, what's the name of the room, Sheila? At the is it the playroom? Is it with the wallpaper? Uh, and no, the no. Uh, the, the one just. On the left hand side, they did with Mrs. the old Dowling's flat. Mrs. Dowling's flat. Yeah. I just love the feeling in it. I think yeah. it's really, it's really lovely. And yeah. uh, one of the things I was thinking about are representations of tenement living. Uh, I haven't, well, I remember there was a, there was a play, uh, there was a version of Dune of the Peacock in the Abbey to the massive stage, a beautiful stage, really beautiful. But there was so much open space in it. I thought it was obviously, you know, this is theatrical. It's to perform the function of, of oh, sorry, excuse me, of showing the play. But uh, in reality, obviously, the spaces would have been tiny, you know. Um, but that's lovely. It's a it's a large room that has been made into a uh, personal uh, domestic space, and you get that feeling. You really get that feeling from from the place, and uh, that. I think because of that, uh, it, it, and you're talking about a feeling in the stairs as well. Like I, I do get that in the front, in the yeah. in Mrs. Dowling's flat. Mrs. Dowling's I, I really, I, that would probably be my favorite place for those reasons. That's that's fantastic. And what would well, your be? Oh gosh, I love talking about Mrs. Dowling's. I, lo I love okay. the story, of Mrs. <laughs> Dowling's. But um, I I think the bedroom. Um, um, and I think the, it's the blue bedroom, the blue bedroom. Really? Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, I, I, I find that I think it's the color in that as well. OK, OK. Yeah. Um, but this content there as well as a guide, I love talking about that, that content in, in the blue bedroom as well. OK. Um, okay. So um, thank you very much, Ross. It's been a fantastic talk and um, my pleasure. Enjoyed it. Um, maybe you can come again and we'll, we'll have another <laughs> chat. about. <laughs> Great. Get me to do some more photographs. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we we'll talk about the details next time. <laughs> but um, thank you very much. And thank you to all of our attendees tonight uh, for coming. And we hope to see you at other events in the future. So um, as well as Tea Time Talks, we run several other events and programs you might be interested in, including Mondays at the Mess, a series of talks at Richmond Barracks that celebrate the rich stories and experiences of the local community, past and present. 
uh, Culture Club, a series of hosted talks and tours that introduce and encourage people to connect with the cultural spaces of the city and the National Neighbourhood, a year round programme that creates ways for people to see and make culture in their place with people they know. So you can find out about all of these uh, through our newsletter on, on our website and on our social media channels. So I hope you enjoyed this talk again. Huge thank you to us there and uh, we'll see you again. So thanks very much. Us. Pleasure. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.